If you're thinking of installing the water-based thermoskirt system, you'll be pleased to know that it plums into your central heating system just like an ordinary radiator. For decades, the traditional British central heating system has plumbed out of the boiler in 28 or 22 mil, branched off in either 15 mil or microbore 10 mil, 8 mil to each of the radiators. And in that time, nothing has changed. Unless of course you're in a new build where you've got two tiny 10 mil plastic pipes coming down the back of your plasterboard and coming out one of those little plastic boxes behind the radiator. Blech. Blech. In this video, we're gonna take a really, really quick look at how skirting heating products like Thermoskirt can plumb back into a bog standard central heating system. And at the end, I'll be giving you my tips on how to commission and bleed a skirting heating system if you are running it on a bog standard setup. Many people think that skirting heating is going to be wildly different from radiators, when in actual fact, it is just one big, long, stretched out radiator. Where your pipework branches off, that allows water to flow into the radiator and back out again. That water transfers its heat energy into the metal, the metal gets hot and that in turn radiates heat onto the air and the air convects the heat around the room. The difference with skirting heating is that this is aluminium. So as the water enters the skirting, the skirting heats up just like your radiator. But because it's aluminium, it has a very, very high emissivity of heat. So this radiates the heat directly into the room through infrared. The flow and return pipes that you see popping up out of the floor to fit into your radiator simply connect on to the end of the skirting heating system. To balance the system, you have a lock shield on the bottom and to control the system, you have a TRV valve on the top. Into this TRV valve, we fit this little wax element and that wax element operates just like the old school radiator TRVs. One thing to note is make sure that you look after this little white collar because that little white collar is what allows you to completely isolate it. As the room heats up, the wax in this bulb expands and in turn that pushes the pin into the valve and that's what shuts it off. The knob on the side of the radiator, if you're not familiar, is called a TRV, which stands for Thermostatic Radiator Valve. And the thermoskirt equivalent of that looks like this. So over the front of this connection, we have a stainless steel cover plate, and this knob then sits on the front, and that gives you basic up and down control of the skirting heating system. If you want to isolate the thermoskirt system completely, you can turn this knob all the way to zero, and if for whatever reason you needed to drain it down, you just turn this to zero and then lock off the lock shield just like you would with a standard radiator. I cannot stress enough how important the first fix plumbing is. So make sure that if you're doing it yourself or you're getting somebody who's not familiar with thermoskirt to do it, that you give them very, very clear instructions on what's required. Just like anything, the prep work is key to the end result. And if the first fix pipe work is in the wrong place or misaligned, then we're gonna to have to do work at second fix stage to make it look right. Because the skirting heating is so slim, it's only 20 millimeters, you have to make sure that the pipe work is flat back to the wall, whether you're coming from above or from below. There are three main ways to connect into the thermoskirt. Typically on a suspended timber floor, the pipe work emerges from below. In that instance, the pipework comes straight up out of the floor and into the skirting heating. Now remember, these are at 35 mil centers. These connections can either be made next to a door or in a corner, or even if you are literally taking a radiator straight out and putting skirting heating in, you can bring the pipes for the radiator together, back to the plaster and plumb straight in. We do a bi-directional version of this feed kit and that will take the water in both directions and link it together. If you're connecting through a wall, it's exactly the same, but the fittings actually rotate to point backwards. Now this is relatively rare, but it often happens if you are either connecting from a room adjacent, or if you have got something like a plant room or a service cupboard or a service riser on the other side of the wall, you might wanna bring the pipe work straight through from behind. Finally, we've got connections from above. 
Now normally if you've got a timber wall, like a stud work wall, this is pretty straightforward. The pipe work just drops in the stud like it normally would and then pop out of the plasterboard at the bottom. If you've got a solid wall that's dot and dabbed or just pure plaster onto block work, then it's a little bit more complicated. Plumber Parts did a really, really good video showing exactly how you should chase out and prep pipes that are coming down the wall. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. I always recommend dropping the pipe work right down to the floor and then when you come to second fix, cut them back at that point. If you need to bring them through the wall from a pipe drop, then do just like the connection through a wall detail. Remember that the heights for these pipes are 35 mil and 90 mil off the finished floor height. Now, personally, I hate to see surface mounted pipes. You can conceal them in systems like the Talon pipe boxing system. And if that is the case, then you literally can just come straight out the side of the pipe boxing and into the skirting. If for whatever reason they have to be surface mounted, one of the benefits of the skirting system is that you can connect into it wherever is more convenient for you. So often with radiators, you'll have the radiator set in a position, normally under the window, and then you have to drop the pipe work down and bring it along to the radiator. With the skirting heating, you can pick and choose which is your start and end point. So if there's a particular corner that's going to look the neatest, you can drop your pipe work down there and then bring the skirting to it. That'll be your natural start point and obviously keep the pipes as discreet as possible. When your thermoskirt installation is complete, commissioning is just like an ordinary radiator. There's no real difference from this and a radiator other than the fact that once you've bled the majority of the air out of the return manifold, this little bleed screw here will allow you to get the vast majority of the air out. Once you've got the majority of the air out, what I do is I isolate every single radiator or thermoskirt system in the house and I just open one room at a time. So that's done on the lock shield. Isolate every single room, open up the room that you want to bleed and let it run for about 10 to 20 minutes. Once the system's run for 10 to 20 minutes, you'll find that the skirting is hot all the way to the end and consistent. Lock off that room and open up the next one and basically work your way around the house until every system's bled. One of the benefits of Thermoskirt is that there's no body of water to collect air. So as those tiny micro bubbles percolate out of the system, they would normally collect at the top of a radiator and need to be bled out. With this, those tiny micro bubbles just get pushed along the length and back to the boiler. So once it's been commissioned, that's it. It's very much a sort of fit and forget. So this bleed screw here is only generally used for commissioning. If you've got any towel rails in the house or you're keeping other radiators in the house, you'll find as you're pushing the air through the system, it tends to collect there as well. So sometimes, particularly if you're doing something like a loft conversion with an ensuite, I'll tend to leave that towel rail in the loft open as well. Any air that gets pushed out of the system through the house will naturally rise to the highest point, and more often than not, that is the towel rail. If you're building a new build or you're installing a completely new heating system, we have another video due on how Thermoskirt can connect back to a manifold, much like an underfloor heating system. So keep your eyes out for that. If you're a plumber or a builder and you think that more videos about skirting heating would be useful, make sure you hit subscribe and follow us for more information.